hill by the town near the forest green and brown is the house of the elf king and queen and in the garden just behind the garden is so kind that the flowers grow for him around and everywhere and daily with his helpers silk and lawn he works there protected by the mother of pearl he walls and flower stories i will tell to you flower stories of green and blue for you flower stories i will tell Flower stories for you. It was a warm, sunny day in the garden, and Silk sat wondering what to do. Mm -hmm. What do I want to do? I know. I'll go for a walk by the sea. Perhaps James would like to come. It would do him good, the lazy old thing. I wonder where he is. Wake up, James, said Sue. <sighs> Wake up. Yes, mm, uh, what? Mm, uh, I'm awake. <laughs> I'm awake. Uh, I didn't do it. I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah. James, interrupted Silk. James, all I want you to do is to come for a walk by the sea with me. Oh, come on. You lazy old cat. Certainly. Yes, of course, I, I want to go to the sea. I've just been dreaming about fish, actually. <laughs> Silk and James wandered along the shore looking at the shells and the starfish, the crabs in the rock pools, and the strange flowers that grew under the water. When Silk saw the fishing boats, she asked if James could count them. Of course I can count them. <laughs> Let me see. Um, um, uh, one boat. Um, uh, two boats. Uh, three. Hmm? <laughs> uh, uh, seven boats. Um, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> There's a funny thing. Yes, well, the next number escapes me for the moment. Imagine the boats are large fish. Perhaps that will make it easier. There. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> twelve boats. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, that did seem to be a marked improvement, said James, blushing. Do you hear anything strange? Yes, I do. It sounds like someone crying, said James. It, it, it's, it's a dragon, said Silk. Oh, said James. W what's a dragon? It's a... It's a... Well, it, 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 it's one of those. Oh, said James, unconvinced. Yes, uh, hello. The, the, the name's James. Oh, don't sit there. Said Silk. You'll catch a terrible cold. I... I have already. Said the dragon, crying even harder. Why do you think he's so sad? Silk asked. It can't just be the cold, can it? I'm not sure, said James. I'd better talk to him again. <clears throat> As I said, the name's James and this is Silk. We're wondering if there's anything we can do to help. Do you? <laughs> there, 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 said James in his most sympathetic voice. Do stop crying. I, I'm getting very wet. All I want, the dragon began, it is a home. Could I live with you? I could do lots of useful things, such as, well, um, well, uh, well, you know, the sort of things that dragons do do. <laughs> you see, sobbed the dragon, no one wants me. <laughs> now look, I can't understand the thing you're saying with all that crying and carrying on. 
That's better. Now, blow your nose. Sit down there in the sun and tell us who you are and where you're from. Well, began the dragon. My name is Mango, and I was born in a land called China. There are almost 387 years ago. My family and I were all first-class dragons and lived with the Emperor in his golden palace. <laughs> After a couple of centuries, I got bored with being a servant, so I escaped. Well, go on, said James, wanting to hear the rest of the story. Uh, oh, oh, it's, it's just I'm not used to talking to people. They usually run away. And But after I escaped, I wandered around the world being banished from kingdom after kingdom. In the last kingdom, I caught the cold I have now. <laughs> and when it, it wasn't too bad, and I, I, I still had some flames, I sneezed and burned down the fire station. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor thing, said Silk. Yes, well, now don't you start crying, said James. Come on, we should be just in time for lunch. Afternoon, everyone, said James. I'd like you all to meet Mango the Dragon. Now, he. Poor James didn't even finish the introduction for the entire garden raised a terrible commotion. Help, 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 me petals, me petals, cried a pansy. Send it away, said a shrinking violet. He'll scorch my petals. James, 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 shouted the marigolds. Keep him away from us, whatever you do. We're your friends. Save us, please. Even the foxglove, usually so loud and rude, seemed nervous. Now, now look here, he stuttered not able to look Mango in the eyes. You can't stay here, you know. But just then, the gardener appeared. He listened to everything Mango had to say, thought a bit, and turned to make an announcement to the garden. I've decided that Mango can stay in the garden. Wait. I've decided he can stay as long as he has a cold, because that way he can't do much harm. But when your flames are better, Mango, you will have to leave the garden. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, said Mango, crying all over again. Oh, you're, oh, you're so kind. <laughs> there, there, said James, rushing to the rescue. Do stop crying. Or the, my whiskers are getting really soggy. Mango's favourite place in the garden was beside the cherry tree. It reminded him of home, he said. So day after day he lay in the sun, snoozing and getting better. But soon, too soon, the day they had all been dreading arrived. Mango's flames reappeared. Just like that. <laughs> Poor Mango. He lost all his new friends as fast as his flames reappeared. That night, Mango began to think he should never, ever have run away. Poor Mango. When morning came, he'd be banished again. And there wasn't much of the world left to go to any. He'd been banned from almost all of it.
but for once, luck was on Mango's side. A bird had seen the way Mango lit up the garden at night and told the local lighthouse keeper. So Mango was marched along the sands to meet the lighthouse keeper, who hired him on the spot. Mango, Mango. And last, Mango felt at home again and could breathe flames in peace. Mango, Mango lives by the sea. Mango, Mango lives by the sea. Mango, Mango lives by the sea. this, eh? Hmm. Oh. Oh, I see. A village fair. Oh, with prizes for the best flowers and, and vegetables. Huh. <laughs> Pity the prizes aren't fish. <laughs> oh, hmm. Still, it's interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. Right. That's it. I'm going to produce something amazing for the village fair competition. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, I can hear the applause now as the judges award me the best prize. Oh, yes. This, this, this is really the life for me. Fresh air, oh, hard work, the, the basic pleasures of life, the song of the little birds. <laughs> little birds? Little birds! James, having no knowledge of gardening, had decided his garden would be a secret, so no one would know if it were a failure. But James was determined that it wouldn't fail. In fact, because he was only allowed one entry, he was growing every possible kind of seed and plant to make sure that at least one plant would be brilliant. But there was a lot of work to be done before he'd know that.
because there was only a month to the village fair, James wanted to watch his garden every moment. But, not surprisingly, James soon got very bored with just sitting and watching and began to think about the things that cats usually like to do. James was already having second thoughts about his garden. Never did he think he'd see the day when he was actually shooing birds away. And there was worse to come. A sudden spell of very hot weather dried the ground. His plants and seeds badly needed water. More water than he could carry. And then he had an idea. Water from the goldfish pond. Now, if, if I divert the water from the goldfish pond to my garden, the plants will be saved, said James gleefully. But now, the goldfish were completely at the mercy of James. wonder if this is all worth it. Huh. And what if I don't win a prize? The idea hardly bore thinking about. Some time later, when the sun hadn't been seen for days, James, in desperation, tried using sunflowers to encourage his plants and seeds to grow. But still, nothing much was happening. And the fair was only a week away. Suddenly, James remembered something. The gardener has bottles of special liquid for making plants grow. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll just borrow a bottle. Hmm? <laughs> the day of the fair arrived, and with it came the sun. And in Jane's secret garden, something had definitely happened. The gardener's special liquid had worked. All James had to do now was to decide what he would enter. <laughs> he chortled to himself. Eh, I've done it. <laughs> I've done it. Just look at this. Ah, it's first prize for me. <laughs> I suppose you think you, you know a good tomato when you see one, said James to the flower elf at the tomato store. Yes, yes, I do, said the flower elf. I can tell you that that is not one. Uh, what? Oh, <laughs> oh well, well, perhaps you're right. Uh, uh, maybe it's, um, it's a melon. Um, no, no said the melon flower elf. Melons are green. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah, so they are. No, my mistake. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, pumpkin. I'll try pumpkin. Say it's 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 a red marrow. Water melon. I'll slice it up and say it's a water melon. I'll win first prize yet. Now, 
No, 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 do not applaud me. No, it, it, it was a mere nothing. Oh, well, if you, if you really want to know how it was done, then you come to the expert. Now, first, first you pick a good, strong plant, and then you make sure... One morning, when the wind was in the right direction, the sky was blue and the sea calm. The gardener decided to sail his boat. think you're going? asked the gardener. The sailing, said James. I thought I'd uh, <laughs> come and chat to a cod or two, eh? <laughs> I swap stories with a swordfish, you know. You? asked the gardener in disbelief. You talk to a cod? <laughs> a cod means only lunch to you. Me? said James. Ah, not me. Oh, no. Oh, I like sailing so much. I'll be far too busy to talk to fish. I, I'll, uh, I'll uh, uh, help with the sails. James, since when have you been interested in sailing? Today. I, 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 mean, I mean, always. Always. It's me whiskers, you know. It gives me balance, you see. Oh, all right. Get in, or I'll never get going. But if you harm so much as one scale on a fish, I'll... I'll... Still, James thought, I may find a little sardine when he's uh, not looking. <laughs> When the gardener had called the fish, they told him of things that only fish know. Of storms at sea, shipwrecks, of sunken treasure, lost underwater cities. James, of course, was more interested in the storytellers than the stories. But by pretending to be listening, he leaned closer and closer. little thing, isn't it? <laughs> that you thought that I was going to eat it. <laughs> uh, you, you, you did? Uh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I was, I, I was just looking, actually. But the whale had seen too many of his smaller friends end up as a cat's dinner. He didn't believe a word that James was saying. You uh, know what I think, don't you? said the whale. Um, uh, no, whispered James. I think it's time you learned a bit more about fish. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, y y y yes. Yes. I, I, I can't swim, 
What an interesting place. Won't they be jealous in the garden when I tell them about this? <laughs> oh. Right, old end boy, the boss wants you, so swim. If I did what? If you ever help yourself 
to a fish again. Oh, oh I wouldn't. Oh, oh, I wouldn't, your, 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 sir, your, your, your sirship. I wouldn't ever uh, uh, touch a fish uh, or, or look at a fish or anything. <laughs> I mean, ever. I, I, I promise. It was a hot, sunny day in the garden, and Silk and Lawn were busy watering and polishing the flowers. James the cat was lying under a very ripe cherry tree thinking. Thinking about cherries. That poor cherry tree, he thought. It must be really tired of holding up all those cherries. I'd better do something to help. Not everyone in the garden was as happy as James. Amongst the hundreds of flowers and plants, there was one plant that seemed to be forgotten, even though it was in front of the gardener's house. But whenever the gardener stepped out of the house, he only noticed the potted bush nearest the path. Good morning, potted bush, he would say, and then hurry off to work. For a long time, the forgotten potted bush didn't mind and kept himself tidy. He wanted to make friends with the other bush, for he greatly admired her shiny red berries. One morning, he tried to tell her. I, I, I like your berries. But the berry bush ignored him and turned her face to the sun. She thought the green bush was very shabby and not worth talking to. The green bush was very hurt and grew more and more angry. I might as well be invisible, said the bush. He was so furious he even shook off a friendly bumblebee. Did you see that? said the foxglove, always ready to make mischief. He thinks he's better than us because he's in a pot, said a pansy. True, 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 murmured the others. We'll just ignore him, they agreed. Now the potted bush felt totally alone and sad, and he was quite sure his pot was too small. His roots were beginning to poke out of the bottom, and his leaves were becoming quite limp. It was even worse when it rained. His pot became full of water, and he felt soggy and uncomfortable. <laughs> Good morning, potted bush, said James. Mm, rubbish, snapped the bush, adding, stupid fat cat, under his breath. Uh, uh, I say, um, uh, are you feeling ill? asked James. Mind your own business. No, no, wait, called the bush. 
I'm sorry. It's, it's well, well, you're the first person who's spoken to me for ages. I, I think I must be invisible. Everyone in the garden ignores me. My pot's too small. My roots are cramped, and even the gardener. Even the gardener ignores you, interrupted James. Yes, even the gardener. But if he ignores me once more, I'm going to do something desperate. Something very, very desperate. Oh, I say, look, here he comes now, said James. Right. There's nothing more to be said. I am going to be noticed. When the gardener saw what the time was, he hurried out of the garden. He had an appointment with the king and queen of the flower elves deep in the forest. But the bush was determined to be noticed and decided to follow the gardener wherever he went. Bravely, he tottered through the gates and into the wide world beyond. Green Bush had never seen the sea before, and by now his roots were sore and blistered from all the walking. He just couldn't resist cooling off in the water. Ah. Oh. It was getting late, and the potted bush found that he was lost in the forest. So you're the potted bush that wants to be noticed, eh? We'll notice you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll notice you. <laughs> Stop that at once. The elf queen listened to the potted bush's sad story. Come with me, she said. I will take care of you. And you can stay the night with us, for the gardener is already on his way home. After the flower elf queen had put the bush into a more comfortable pot, she used every bit of elf magic she knew to make him feel better. Next morning, the flower elves guided the bush back to the garden and left him at the gate in the pearly wall. I, I, I don't suppose anyone even noticed I was gone he said to himself. In fact, everyone in the garden had noticed he was missing, and he'd become a hero overnight, for no other plant had ever been brave enough to go into the world beyond the gates. They all wanted to hear about the sea and the forest. Welcome home, said the gardener. 
What a brave potted bush you are. At last, the potted green bush had all the attention he could want. He sat in the sun and told stories of the sea and the forest and all the wonderful things outside the garden's pearly walls. It was very quiet in the garden. The gardener had gone to visit the elf king in the forest. Silk and lawn were weeding in a far off corner. James the cat was sunbathing in his favorite marigold patch and thinking. I do wish I was original. Black and white cats are so common. Perhaps if I was a different shape. I don't want to look silly. Ah! Wings! That's a good idea. I'd be famous. The only cat in the world with wings. Huh. I can hear the crowds now. He felt very silly. Dignity is what I want, he said. Dignity and respect. I bet that tiger lily gets respect. Then James had a brilliant idea. If a tiger lily can get respect, he said, a tiger cat should. I shall paint myself to look like a fierce tiger. When James had painted himself, he sat down amongst the marigolds and waited for someone to come along. While waiting, he quietly practiced roaring. Yes, said James. That sounds good. Ah, here comes Silk. She'll never know who I am. Morning, James, said Silk. Did you know your face was dirty? It's not dirty, he said. And I'm not James. I'm a fierce tiger and I'm, I'm going to eat you all up. And I... Oh, don't be silly, said Silk as she walked on. After such a difficult morning, James decided to sleep. I'm just so ordinary and useless, he said, that sleeping is the only thing I'm good at. He flopped down beside a small, ugly bush he hadn't noticed before.
Silk, a lawn, and come quickly, James called. What is it? asked Silk. I don't know, Lorn answered. The gardener will do something when he comes back. It's, it's just a freak of nature. What? screamed a strange voice. A freak of nature? Uh, me? Who said that? asked James. It, it was the tree, said Lorn. And look, it's cutting the sun off from the garden. The flowers will die. Come on, said James. Follow me. But I can't see, said Silk. Uh, hold on to me tail tightly, said James. You know, said Lord, that tree reminds me of the Black Queen. Who? asked James. The Black Queen. She used to live in the tower on the hill and hated anything beautiful. So she cast spells on the garden to make it as ugly as her. But the Elf King broke her spell and destroyed her power forever. Oh, no, he didn't, the tree interrupted. You're right. I am the Black Queen, and I've returned for my revenge. <laughs> I shall spread these branches so far that not a single drop of rain or ray of sunshine will ever reach the garden again. <laughs> Everything will wither and die. <laughs> Luckily, the Black Queen's branches hadn't stretched as far as the edge of the garden. In fact, the Elf Queen was busy collecting flower petals, quite unaware of what was happening. Good morning, said the Elf Queen. Oh, whatever is that ugly thing? It's the Black Queen disguised as a tree, said Silk. She will kill the garden. What can we do? Nothing. Nothing at all, said the Elf Queen. We need the Elf King, and by the time he gets here, it will be too late. Oh, dear, said James. If only I could think of something clever. And then James had his brilliant idea. The Black Queen hates beautiful things, doesn't she? Well, it will soon be night and she'll be asleep. Now, here's what we'll do. Lorne, I want you... Silk. Wake up, Black Queen, called James. Wake up and show us your beautiful flowers. What? What? Beautiful? <laughs> no, I'm not beautiful. I'm ugly. <laughs> ugly. <laughs> yeah! Uh, look at the flowers! Uh, uh. When they thought they had overcome the Black Queen, they turned away. But... <laughs> cackled the Queen. Don't think you can escape me. <laughs> but the gardener had returned with the Elf King. Uh, uh, stop! Uh, stop! Stop! Now what shall we do with you? said the Elf King. I know. Stop. Stop!
No, no, said James. Don't thank me. That was nothing. After all, with brains like mine, it's simple to get rid of the Black Queen. <laughs> She's gone now, forever. I'm not so sure, whispered Silk. said the green elephant, as though nothing was out of the ordinary. You roared, said Lorne. But elephants don't roar. The don't they? said the green elephant. The oh, 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 oh dear. Well, uh, I've never met an elephant. Uh, how could I know what sound they make? Never met. But you are an elephant. Uh, uh, am I? Oh. Uh, uh, can, can you tell me about elephants? And uh, uh, do you know uh, well, what this is? Surely uh, the elephants don't have um, branches hanging from their faces. Uh, that is your trunk, said Lorne. Every elephant has one. Oh, uh, said the elephant. And uh, what else do you know about elephants? Look, said Lorne, feeling very confused. If I tell you everything I know about elephants, will you tell me why you don't know about them? Uh, who said I uh, don't know anything about elephants? Replied the elephant. It's, uh, it's just that, uh, well, well I, uh, I seem to have forgotten everything. But elephants never forget, said Lorne. Uh, the, that proves it, then. I can't be an elephant if I've forgotten something. This is all so silly, shouted Lorne, that I wouldn't be surprised to see a flying pig next. You called? asked the flying pig. Ah, first a green elephant, a green elephant who doesn't know he's an elephant, then a, a flying pig, a green flying pig. Are there any more surprises? Are you all doing in the garden? Lorne asked. No, um, we're lost, said the pig. All of you? asked Lorne. Ah, I'm afraid so, said the pig, sheepishly. Uh, well, um, uh, first uh, I uh, forgot to tell them where we were going. <laughs> then uh, I forgot too added the elephant. Well, you... you can't stay here, 
said Lorne. It's the gardener, whispered Lorne. You'll, you'll all have to hide. I can't remember these bushes, mumbled Mr. Mead, the gardener. Ah, ah, shoot! I'm sure I thought I... Oh, of course, bushes don't sneeze. Oh. Well, they don't usually sneeze. Oh, well, I don't know. Perhaps they do. Perhaps I need a rest. I think, said Lorne, that after that narrow escape, you'd better start at the beginning and tell me where you're from why you are here, and what you intend to do about it. Uh, I'm afraid uh, I can't help, said the elephant. Uh, you see, uh, uh, those are exactly uh, the things I've forgotten. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, said the pig impatiently. Far beyond the hills, the hills behind the village, there lives a magician. Me, a very friendly magician, but not at all evil. And... But he had many visitors. The trouble was, decided the magician, the trouble was the tall hedge in front of his house. Looked too dark and unfriendly. So he thought of a way to make the hedge look more friendly. When the magician had finished clipping and trimming, he liked the animals so much, he brought them to life. When the magician felt like a rest, the animals decided to go and explore. They went so far from the magician's garden that the magician's spell became weaker, and the elephant forgot everything he knew, including the fact that he was an elephant. Well, said the pig, finishing the story, when all this happened, we, we felt so silly, we just wanted to hide away forever. We thought mm, this garden would be perfect, but um, mm, well, obviously it isn't. But why do you want to hide? And uh, who wants a, a dog that's, that's green and twiggy? Uh, and who could uh, love um, uh, um, whatever I am <laughs> that roars? Perhaps the magician would, said Lorne. Mm, we're sure he would, agreed the pig. But he doesn't know where we are. Couldn't you help us? Mm, well, I... But what, what if we tried to remind the elephant? Oh, uh, that, that sounds like a, um, a good idea, said the elephant. I'll, I'll, I'll just go and get him. <laughs> he's, uh, he's green, uh, isn't he? You're the green elephant, you fool, said the pig. Oh, yes, 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 um, yes, so I am, said the elephant, feeling very foolish. D -d 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 please go on. D -d -d you were saying something about um, helping uh, me to remember. If you could see over the wall, you might remember which way you came.
Can you see anything? Can you see anything? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I think I can uh, see the magician. Oops. Afternoon, magician. Um, uh, do you know that uh, I'm an elephant, and that um, I think I'd better get you home. You don't sound well," said the magician, not understanding the elephant at all. You know, I'm sure I saw some new bushes here this morning," said Mr. Mead, the gardener, feeling very puzzled. <laughs> they couldn't have walked off. Could they? asleep, of course, and totally unaware of anything happening in the garden, including what was happening right above his head. Cornelius, a brand new canary, was learning to fly, but Cornelius had no head for heights. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, 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 I'll never learn to fly. I can't even walk on a branch. Oh dear, oh dear, dear, dear. If only these silly wings were bigger, then I could balance. Then I could fly and... Ah! Morning, James, said Silk. Mm, yeah, yeah. I do like your hat. Mm. <laughs> ah, they're very funny indeed. <laughs> she must think I'm... Really stupid. <laughs> oh, oh. Ah. Can't lie here all day and be insulted. I'll take a walk around the garden and um, then I might just have a little rest. <laughs> ah, morning, morning, yeah, morning. Oh dear, he's a very bumpy walker. <laughs> <laughs> and what's wrong with you? <laughs> Snapped James. Uh, nothing, said the foxglove. But uh, how can I say it? Say what? Said James. Um, said the foxglove, who loved causing trouble. Uh, how does it um, feel to have a heap of feathers on your head? Hmm? Uh, I mean, it, it, it looks so, so silly. Ah, uh, true, uh, true, uh, sniffed a nearby pansy. Anyway. Who ever heard of a cat with a canary for a hat? <laughs> a cat. Mm? What? A, a cat with a canary for a hat, James repeated. Uh, w w what do you mean? Mm? Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> well, uh, uh, my name's James, and uh, uh, how did you get there? I, I fell out of a tree. Do you think you could move somewhere else? Hmm? I mean, you're making me look pretty silly, you know. <laughs> Oh, yes, it must be awful for you, and, well, well, I would move if I could, but, 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 well, well I, I, I have no head for heights, so, so, I'm never, ever going to learn to fly, so I, I've got to stay here. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can't fly, is it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, 
Never mind. I shall teach you to fly when you're bigger. Oh, James, you're so good to me. You're such a kind cat. Yes, yes, well, of course I am. I mean, that's I mean, what I'm here for. I'm to be everybody's friend. Night and day, I'm at your service. Oh, poor thing. He's knocked himself out. He must be very tired. Right. One, two, three, up. Again. One, two, three, up. Uh, one, two, three, up. Stop! I think I'll teach you another way, said James. But teaching Cornelius, who was getting fatter and heavier every day, to fly was becoming the least of James' worries. Cornelius had a lot of relations, and they insisted on visiting every day. Just imagine, muttered James, if one of my relations saw me. I look more like a birdcage than a black and white cat. From time to time, James asserted himself but not often. <coughs> Poor James. He just couldn't get rid of Cornelius. Cornelius, said James finally, we've got to have a very serious talk because you've got a decision to make. Either you get off my head and become a proper bird or you become something quite different. Either way, I want you off my head as soon as, as, <coughs> as, well, of course, on second thoughts. I mean, oh, no, feel free. <laughs> stay on, my friend. <laughs> stay on as, as long as you like. And that gave James his next brilliant idea. Hmm, as long as you like. Hmm, <laughs> what if Cornelius didn't like it on my head, eh? What a beautiful day for a walk, Cornelius. <laughs> ah, I love the view from here, too. Mm, mm, I, uh, I think I'll uh, go a little higher. Hmm? Do you really think we should, James? asked Cornelius. I can see perfectly well. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I do think we should, answered James. Hmm. The, you know, the view from that tree looks good. Oh, 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 oh good, said Cornelius, very nervously. Uh, uh, let's get out of this tree and walk over. No. <laughs> oh, no. No, we're not going to walk. I'm going to jump. <whistles> ah, well, thought James. I'll keep trying till he does fly.
can fly. I, I can fly. Look at me, James. I can fly. I'm looking, said James with an evil leer. At last, Cornelius was a real bird. And at last, James could be a real cat again and do the things that cats really like to do. Rose has opened. Come and see. James thought that he should welcome the Rose. She seemed very important, and he wanted to make her feel at home. But of course he had to say good morning to all the other flowers too. Morning. 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 Good morning. Morning. Good morning. 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 Ahem. <coughs> uh, yes, um... Uh, on behalf of the gardener, uh, Silk, Lawn, the Elf King and Queen, and myself, my name's James, I would like to welcome you to the garden. We hope you will be very happy with us, and you like us as much as we like you. No one speaks to me unless I address them first. I... I didn't believe. Did, did you hear... I, I couldn't believe my ears, but, but she did. Oh. <laughs> Would that common uh, marigold stop nudging my stem with its vulgar leaf? It was not a leaf, it was my best whisker. Really? said the rose. I still don't want it near me. I don't care what you want, madam. What I want is for you to stop being rude about the marigolds. You see, you've upset them very deeply. Marigolds are very gentle plants. They're, they are very kind, honest. Sunny, and they're loyal. <laughs> yes, yes, said the rose. Now be a good boy and move, would you? You're keeping the sun off me. Oh, yes, and run and fetch the gardener, would you? I want him. Well, go on. Go on. Would you hurry? Between, between you and me, that new rose is really too much to bear. And if you don't talk to her, I might do something really desperate. Now, it's perfectly plain to me that I'm the best flower in this garden, so I demand to be moved away from those common marigolds. 
Now let me see. Oh yes, yes. I wish to stand there, right between the sunflower and the freezer. No, I'm sorry, but you can't stand there, said the gardener. They are the elf king and queen's special flowers. I don't care, said the rose. Even the kindly gardener became a little angry. All right, I will move you, said the gardener. But only because you've upset the marigolds. They're good, said the vain rose. <laughs> Good morning, said the sunflower. Good morning, said the freezer. I've never been treated so roughly in my life. And look, look where I am now. I, I, I feel like their serpent. What do you want? Asked the rose crossly. We wondered if you had any spare juicy leaves. We're all feeling a bit hungry, and... Certainly not. The other flowers in the garden just couldn't believe their ears. They'd never heard of such an unkind and rude flower. But as the morning wore on, the sun got hotter and hotter. Many of the flowers covered their petals with their leaves, and the birds and butterflies hid in dark trees and bushes. But not the vain rose. Oh, no. She wanted everyone to see her all the time. You really should be careful, advised the gardener. That sun is very hot and... No, said the rose. I must sit in the sun. I must be admired by everyone. And so the day passed. And when the moon rose and lit the garden, the freezers saw the rose was still open. You'll catch a cold if you stay open all night, said the freezier. Rubbish, snapped the rose. I must stay open so everyone can admire me. no sympathy for her from the garden. But the gardener couldn't ignore any sick plant. He wrapped the rose warmly and took her into the house. For a few days the garden returned to normal. Then the rose returned. Uh, what dreadful flowers, the rose murmured. Really, I should be king and queen of the garden. Hmm. But I'll have to get rid of the sunflower and the freezer. And to do that, I'll need some help. Ah, good morning, caterpillars. Would you like one of my nice, juicy leaves? Then say you shall, if you'll do something for me in return. Oh... Oh, what charming snails. You have such pretty shells. Would you like a leaf or two? Very well, but come here first. Now, I want you to listen very carefully because we have to think of something. play fat cat. I must address my new subjects. 
Good morning. I am your new king and queen. I shall now read you the rules for flowers and plants who live in this garden. Now, rule number one, no plant to be taller than me. Rule number two, no other plant to have red flowers. Rule number three, no talking until spoken to. Rule number four, no flower to be prettier than me. Rule number five, no laughter in the garden. Rule number six, no birds to sing unless I order it. Rule number seven, the sun must shine on me every day. Rule number eight, I want you to go along there and listen very carefully. Rule number nine, no... The elf king and queen had hurried to save the sunflower and the freesia. They were amazed to think that any flower could behave like the rose. Rule 97. There shall be no cats in this garden. Rule 98. There shall be no marigolds in this garden. Rule 99. There shall be... Help! 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 Oh. Oh. I do enjoy gardening. On a hill by the town, near the forest green and brown, is the house of the elf king and queen. And in the garden just behind, the garden is so kind that the flowers grow for him around and everywhere. And daily with his helpers, silk and lawn, he works there protected by the mother of pearl he walls. And flower stories I will tell to you. Flower stories of green and blue for you. Flower stories I will tell. Flower stories for you. back, that crazy and lovable mongrel, Rhubarb. He and his cunning pal, Custard, are taking off in 15 more fun-packed adventures. Roll up, roll up, shouted Rhubarb at the top of his bark. Join Rhubarb as he becomes a one-dog circus, joins the scouting team, learns some new dance steps, and declares himself royalty. He's one of a kind, ingenious, irresistible, and extraordinarily clever. Boy, you look. This is a very funny play, don't you know? So why aren't you laughing, eh? It's time once again for more rhubarb. The heroic Sir Prancelot and his team of crusaders set forth on a journey to the Holy Land. Keep well under cover, men. I do not doubt we shall meet desperate resistance. Armed with his extraordinary inventions, he tries to outwit the wicked Duke Uglio and the dastardly Count Otto the Blot. Uh, no! <laughs> From the creator of Captain Pugwash, preschoolers will enjoy the medieval adventures of Sir Prancelot. It's a collection of musical stories and warm-hearted adventures especially designed for the preschooler. Join Mr. Eppet and Clara the Cow as they repaint the rainbow that once brightened their small town after it almost got washed away. Meet the Up and Down Man with mime artist Ben Benison as he explores the world of silent and whimsical humor. Let your imaginative powers go with Jungle Ted and the Lacey Button Poppers. Enter the Enchanted House 
where three charming occupants come to the aid of their friends when a little bit of magic is needed. A special and entertaining series for children ages two through five. Playbox One.